Okay, so welcome to the next um, video in the Microbit series. In this video, we're going to be covering uh, for loops. And a for loop is uh, a loop that will repeat a sequence of code a number of times, um, a specific number of times in this case. But each time that we loop through, we're also going to store the current loop counter inside of a variable. And that can be used within our code to good effect. So I'm just going to go to the loops area and I'm going to drag in my for loop. So this is what a for loop looks like. This number here can be changed to set the number of times that we're going to loop. And this is the variable that stores the current loop value. So rather than i, I'm going to rename that to counter. So what we're going to use this loop for, in this video we're going to be creating a rocket launch system which counts down from 5 and once 5 has gone down to 0 and we're displaying that on the screen every second we're going to output a string that just says blast off. So I want this to happen whenever I press button A. So that's, that's the trigger that is going to trigger this countdown starting. And each time that we loop round I want to show the number and in this case I want to show the number counter. So we go to variables, I'm going to drag that in and I'm going to pop that in there. Now this is going to cause an issue for us that means this program won't work but I'm going to show you that first and then we're going to look at how we can fix it. So we're going to show the number and obviously we want this to happen every second so I'm going to put a pause in there and I'm going to make sure that that pauses for a thousand milliseconds, one second before we go around and loop again. So if I run this code you're going to see the issue that we have. So when I press A, the loop will start, but it starts at zero and it counts up because that's what a for loop will do. Okay, The for loop in micro bit will start at zero and count up to five and then stop looping the code that's inside. And every time it loops, it stores the current value inside counter. So whenever we show counter, we're obviously we're counting up, but we want to count down. So how are we going to do this? We're going to use a maths um, operator. We're going to drag that in. And what we're going to say is, whatever our countdown value is, so we're always starting at 5, and we're going to minus the current value of counter. So the first time it loops around, counter will equal 0. So obviously, we're going to output the number 5. The second time that it loops around, counter will equal 1. 5 minus 1 equals 4. And then the next time, it will equal 2. 5 minus 2 is 3, and so on. So this is what's going to allow us to be able to count down. So if I run that code now, press A. See, we start at 5, and each second, we count down by 1 until we get to zero and then the program will stop okay now obviously we want to be able to show blast off after that we need to do that outside of the loop so we need to allow the loop to do its thing counting down the numbers and then we show the string blast off now as you can see in the previous one this showed the number zero now that clearly is when we want to show the word blast off instead so rather than counting down from five we're going to count down from four Okay, the reason that happens is because programming languages tend to start counting at zero. They don't start counting at one. So whenever we want to loop through five times, if we stop at the number four, that means our first loop is zero, second is one, third is two, fourth is three, and the fifth time round is four. So by ending our loop at four, that means that we're going to have our countdown from five. So if I run that, you can see our final piece of code. Four, three, two, one, and then rather than zero, we immediately get our blast off signal.